Action News 24 Sports with Scott Wodega. The Mercyhurst men's ice hockey team is getting ready for the big dance on ice. Well, the Browns brought everything at the Steelers tonight, sacking Ben Roethlisberger eight times. It was enough to earn their first win over their rivals since 2003. We've called so many big games, and to each of us watching at home, each game seems special. How do you do that time and time again? Uh, I've, I've been lucky to be a part of this for a long time. You can get it on GilbertGottfried.com. Okay, I'll log on when I get home. Now, what is your I think opinion? He's lying. <laughs> he says he's gonna log on. Now, would I he's lie? He's not really gonna do it. I wouldn't lie to the King of USA up all yes. night. Yes, that's a horrible title to live with. Scott Wadego worked at Channel 24 in Erie for seven years, and Erie supplied plenty of opportunities. Well, there's tremendous opportunity covering sports in Erie, Pennsylvania, because you're gonna cover the Pittsburgh team, so you're gonna cover Pittsburgh and cover the Steelers cover some Penguins, cover the Pirates. You're close enough to Cleveland, you're gonna do the same thing with the Browns and the Indians and the Cavs. And then you even go up to Buffalo and cover the Bills and the Sabres. So not only do you get that experience on a small scale covering high school sports and Division II college sports, you're also covering the professional team. So it's really probably a, a unique market that even though it's a pretty small TV market, you're covering the big teams. While in Erie, Scott did more than just cover sports. And one more note for you, Carla. Women's lacrosse, Gannon, you know, they won the ECAC championship last year. Off to a good start so far, hammering Stonehill 20 to 6. No, actually, I met my wife at the TV station. She was a summer intern uh, when I was already working there. And it turned out that she's from Jefferson and I'm from Andover. All I knew is that she was a girl from Ohio University. So we kind of hit it off that, that we were both from the same area. She got a job in Erie, and uh, we ended up at the same station. We rode to work together for a few years. So uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty great. She ran the teleprompter for me because I sat next to her. Not only did they work together live, but they continued that chemistry away from the desk. Is it on? I think so. Well, take off the lens cap. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. I'm Scott. And I'm Carla. That was probably uh, one of the most fun just video production things that we ever did. So stay tuned for Take Me Out to the Ball Game. A nine inning tour of Pennsylvania. It's a Grand Slammer challenge Don't and you are it. going down. You are going down. Jerry Oak Park in Erie was built in 1995. Fans love the unique downtown setting. I am absolutely terrible when it comes to playing baseball or throwing a ball, but I'm going to give it my shot here at the Red Baron's fast pitch. Okay, right here. And so it was all about the fan experience. Uh, we had a, a great crew, an awesome producer who, uh, who really brought it all together, and an uh, outstanding cameraman, Craig. We say he invented the slow zoom. But just to uh, be able to go around and experience just the fun aspects of minor league baseball. We interviewed so many people, and it, we logged all the sound bites, and it just it took forever because we had to write down everything we had, organize it, and put the show together, and it ended up being like a 52-minute show about the fan experience of minor league baseball. It was just a, a really fun experience and just a, just a fun thing to do. After Erie, Scott took his expertise to the classroom. You never know what's gonna happen. A, a casual conversation about what high school students could learn in a video production class turned into a teaching opportunity. And so after a, a conversation with Mr. Medock, who at the time was the assistant superintendent here, uh, turned into an interview at ATEC, and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm teaching a class for part of the day, going home and taking a nap, and then going back to my job at the TV station. Working as a teacher at Pyman Tuning Valley, he came across plenty of characters. Well, I think uh, when you talk about characters in class, that could go a lot of directions. You have some that were just some really fun personalities. I mean, that, that first class that I had was full of them, with Brenton and Rob and the projects that those guys did, and, and uh, Kind of the craziness that guys like uh, Chris and Ryan brought to that first year. Sure, those are those are memorable people. But and, and that's another reason I like to have the pictures in the classroom of all the the pictures of the the senior groups because a lot of memories are made and you, you build relationships with those students and and you like to see them succeed. One of Scott's students has made a pretty successful career out of what he learned in the classroom. One of my greatest accomplishments, and um, to this day, you know, I've, I've 
been nominated for Emmys. I've won Maro Awards. But one of the, you know, one of the things that I hang my hat on is uh, placing in Skills USA, and that was all because of Scott. Scott has seen his fair share of creative students come and go. They like to push the boundaries. I had a, I had a student chop up a pumpkin with a sawzall, and everybody thought that it, it was a murder scene, and this was so inappropriate for class. And, and just about when, when someone is ready to say, how could you let these students put together this video in this tone, they hold up a jack-o'-lantern, and it is a really well-done spot. And there were plenty of projects that pushed the boundaries of a classroom. I think that, in a way, you have to let students push the boundaries uh, and, and also know when to say, hey, you can't do that. I, I had two students make a music video to uh, Blue Oyster Cult's Don't Fear the Reaper. It's really great. It's really well done. But there is an underlying tone that, that drugs were an influence in the video. So you could take it as it's an anti-drug video. Don't do drugs or you're going to think the Grim Reaper is chasing you through the woods. Or you could say, hey guys, you got to reel it in a little bit. Scott put in 13 years at Pima Tuning and now he's moving on. Inevitably, you would have it a little emotional uh, attachment to it because you spent so many years here. But I thought, hey, K through 12, that's 13 years. And so now I've got 13 years of teaching and I'll be moving the program to Jefferson next year. So I'm, I'm excited to, to take what I've learned from students here and to take the, the opportunities to a different group of students and, and see where it goes from there and help them grow. Reporting from the Renaissance Center in Detroit, I'm Scott Wadiga, Action News 24 Sports.